DNA repair by translesion DNA synthesis. So the question that first comes to mind is, can translesion DNA synthesis be considered a DNA repair? In the overall picture, translesion DNA synthesis is associated with DNA repair because it actually prevents the replication for, from getting arrested and thereby it is enabling the replication to get completed which is essential or which is required by the cell in question. So therefore, although the translation DNA synthesis may not be addressing the bulky adduct or the wrong nucleotide or the alkylated or the oxidized uh, 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 or the thymidine dimers, uh, but uh, it is not correcting those adducts, but it is bypassing the adducts. And since it bypasses the adducts, it is still able to allow the replication fork to continue in its journey to replicate the DNA. So that is the reason why translation DNA synthesis is associated with DNA repair. So let us look at the learning outcomes of this session. Translation DNA synthesis is carried out by specialized DNA polymerases and most of which belong to the Y family of DNA polymerases. Uh, they are able to accommodate bulky adducts in their active site and randomly add a nucleotide to bypass the adduct. The TLS is a means of addressing replication fork arrest due to DNA lesions. The switch of the main polymerizing enzyme, which actually cannot uh, you know, go beyond the uh, base lesion, so therefore they would fall off generally or they would just stall at that position, pause at that position. So therefore, there is a polymerase switch between the polymerase enzyme and a specialized DNA polymerase. And then this DNA polymerase ensures that uh, the replication fork moves forward. Although the replication definitely may be error prone. In prokaryotes, these specialized DNA polymerases are DNA polymerase 5 and also in certain cases DNA polymerase 2 acts. While in eukaryotes, there are se several DNA polymerases like DNA pol, zeta, iota, kappa, eta, majorly belonging to the Y-type DNA polymerases. There are several, several accessory proteins with PCNA in eukaryotes and beta clamp in prokaryotes playing an important role. Let us just look at a general overview of the understanding of TLS. So here let's consider that a normal uh, replicating enzyme is carrying out replication of DNA and it reaches a adduct, a damaged, a lesion. So here the damage that you see is a thymidine dimer and this definitely is a bulky adduct. Now generally what has been observed is these bulky adducts cannot get into the active site of the normal replicating DNA polymerases. And so coming at this point, they would basically stall. Now, there are also suggestions that this therefore assembly is dissociating from the DNA. And in place of this assembly, you have another PCNA coming and binding, which is ubiquitinated. And this ubiquitinated PCNA is now going to recruit specialized DNA polymerases. Say, for example, over here, what they have shown is Paul eta. If they are recruited, then the Paul eta will continue replication by bypassing the lesion. And so the cell is going to survive. While if the Paul eta is not introducing or inserting a nucleotide or nucleotides against the adduct, then the replication is stalled and that can lead to cell death. So TLS in prokaryotes, we just again have uh, get an overview of that. So earlier what was thought was that when you have the polymerase 3, which is a main polymerizing enzyme with the beta clamp synthesizing and reaching a adduct, here again, what is shown is a thymidine dimer. Please note that most TLSs have been basically studied because of the thymidine dimers that are there. In fact, most DNA repairs are associated with the thymidine dimer. So lots of studies have been carried out because UV irrad irradiation is uh, possibly uh, leading to formation of lots of thymidine dimers and thereby understanding the repair of those thymidine dimers have led to uh, finding out which are the different repair mechanisms within the system. And from there also, 
uh, one could find out the translation uh, uh, synthesis as well. So earlier what was observed is that the REC A is instrumental in uh, correcting or in bypassing these, uh, these, these lesions. So uh, there is another molecule called the UMUDC. There are two uh, uh, UMU uh, subunits which come together and uh, the DNA Pol3 itself will uh, continue to synthesize the DNA but the REC A is responsible for incorporating a nucleotide against the adduct. So it's not the DNA Pol3 basically that is adding the nucleotide or replicating at that point. It is the REC A and the UMU DC that is helping to do it and thereafter uh, replication is continued by DNA Pol3. As more and more studies were conducted, it was observed that UMU DC is actually part of or is equivalent to a DNA polymerase 5. And thus DNA polymerase 5 belongs to the Y family of the DNA polymerases. And so it was observed that uh, later on the studies suggested that the DNA Pol3 would leave from the point where it could not move ahead. So the replication fork stalled at this point. In fact, you must understand that many times a helicase continues to unwind, but the polymerase is not able to move forward. So here what is observed is that the Pol3 is released and in place of Pol3, Pol5 binds to the beta clamp or the beta clamp is the one that is recruiting the Pol5 and with the help of ATP, it would just add a nucleotide and having added the nucleotide against the adduct, it will leave. Thereafter, the beta clamp will again take up the DNA Pol3 and synthesis will be continued. So it is only to take care of the DNA lesion that is add any nucleotide against this thymidine dimer over here. It could be any other DNA lesion for that matter. So the DNA Pol5, the specialist DNA Pol5 is able to add nucleotides to the bulky adduct which a normal replicating polymerase cannot do. And this is why it is considered to be carrying out translation synthesis. So it is going or it is bypassing the adduct without repairing it. Please note that this has not been repaired. But what has happened is that the replication fork is not allowed to be stalled or replication is not allowed to be stalled and it continues to synthesize after it adds a random nucleotide or maybe even the correct nucleotide and then the DNA Pol3 continues to synthesize further. So this is what is being observed in the prokaryotes and the DNA Pol5 has a major role to play in translesion synthesis. Now just uh, looking at the mechanism per se, it's a general mechanism. So what happens is that until you have an adduct being reached, so here you can see there is a thymidin dimer. So until here you have the replicative polymerase synthesizing from this point on the polymerase is removed, that the replicating polymerase is removed and in place of that or rather the polymerase is switched from the replicative polymerase to a translation synthesis polymerase. So a translation uh, polymerase will come and bind and will add either the correct nucleotides against the thymidine dimer over here or if it is a G uh, which is oxo G it would add a C or it would add an A and continue okay and it will extend it to one or two nucleotides. Thereafter, there will again be a poly, uh, polymerase switch from the translation uh, uh, DNA polymerase to normal replicating polymerase. Please note that most uh, translation uh, polymerases are not very, uh, how do you put it, uh, are not very fiddle enzymes. That means they may not even have an exonuclease activity to carry out proofreading. So generally what is observed is that in undamaged DNA, when a polymerase that is responsible for translation synthesis carries out polymerase activity, then it is highly error prone. It will add a wrong nucleotide and go ahead. And so uh, it is it is clear indicative of the fact that TLS is associated with mutagenesis. So although it helps bypassing the lesion and allowing replication to complete, but if it were the TLS to continue to replicate, then it would add wrong nucleotides as it goes by 
and not corrected thereby leaving a lot of mutations especially point mutations and so tls is associated with mutagenesis but the significance is that it has been able to allow replication to move forward and for the cell at that point of time it is important that it is able to complete the replication even if it is a wrong nucleotide that has been added many a times these wrong nucleotides if they are added they are corrected by the other dna repair mechanism say for example the ner that is nucleotide excision repair system or if there is a double strand break then it is being taken care of by a recombination repair mechanism now this over here is a one step tls by dna polyta so here the example that is there is for the polyta so the polyta is binding once the pol, uh, 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 replicative polymerase leaves, it is the polyta that comes and binds and adds the nucleotides and leaves and allows the polymerase replica uh, replicating polymerase to continue the synthesis. So this is just one step. But many a times what has been observed that the TLS is done by two DNA polymerases in two steps. So uh, it may so happen that depending on the kind of adduct that is there, or depending on the kind of cell that it is present in, you cannot have uh, the uh, adduct being uh, bypassed by only one DNA polymerase. Therefore, you will have two different DNA polymerases binding to the PCNA and extending the uh, replication to a certain extent and thereby again you have the polyp. So here what it happens is there are two switches that are happening. One is from the replicative polymerase to a translation synthesis polymerase and then again to a translation polymerase uh, uh, and then back to this. So there, here it becomes what is called as a two-step TLS. And this has been, um, yeah, for example, in this case, uh, you may have the first polymerase that is working as the pol eta and the second polymerase that is uh, extending the uh, synthesis is uh, the pol zeta. So this is an understanding of the mechanism of uh, TLS in cells. Uh, you have, of course, the TLS being carried out by the specialized DNA polymerases. And when you compare the uh, structure of the normal replicating polymerase with the uh, specialized DNA polymerases, you will find that they share a lot of common uh, domains. For example, you have the palm domain in case of the specialized DNA polymerase as well. You have the palm in the normal polymerase itself. You have the exonuclease which is present in the normal replicating polymerase and that's the reason why it is a highly fiddle enzyme. It will ensure that it is removing the wrong nucleotide and adding a correct nucleotide and then moving forward. But in this case, you can see that it does not have that exonuclease domain. This is specifically a structure for DNA pol eta. And interestingly, what is also observed is that the active site that is present in a normal replicating DNA polymerase is much narrower or much smaller. Whereas in case of the uh, specialized DNA polymerase, the active site is quite broad and it is able to hold an, ad uh, an adduct which is highly bulky. And in front of the bulky adduct, it is able to add a nucleotide and go forward. So therefore, that that possibility of binding to bulky adducts makes it able to uh, hold on to the bulky adduct. In this case, the bulky adduct may not be even held by the uh, uh, DNA polymerase properly and so therefore synthesis stalls. In this case, it is able to bind, it is able to accommodate the bulky adduct and therefore it is able to add nucleotides to it and move forward. So of the specialized DNA polymerases, you have DNA polymerase eta, you have Paul Iota, you have Paul Kappa, uh, and of course, all these belong to the Y family. Uh, you have the Paul uh, Zeta, which actually be belongs to the B family, but it has been found to have a role in translation synthesis. Now, just looking at the few uh, specialized DNA polymerases with a few of its characteristics, Rev1, which is a specialized DNA polymerase and is associated with uh, TLS uh, was discovered of course in East and it was found to be a component of Paul Zeta complex and interestingly it has a deoxycyclic mono, uh, sorry, cytosine monophosphate transferase activity which means it adds the DC to a template DG. 
okay so it has specifically or it can specifically add c using a template that has g polyta plays a key role in accurate replication for uh, the cpds what are the cpds it is the cyclobutin pyrimidine dimers and as it has a large active site it accommodates both the uh, pyrimidines which are in a dimer form and then to both the t's it is adding the a in fact what has been observed is that the polyta actually adds the correct nucleotide so it carries out an accurate replication but if you have the pol eta uh, carrying out replication in an undamaged dna then it is found to uh, make errors so this is an interesting facet when it is bound to the thymidine dimers it adds the correct nucleotide that is to both it adds a and a and then moves forward but when it is uh, replicating a normal uh, dna which is not damaged or does not have a dna lesion then it is prone to making errors Polyota is reported to incorporate nucleotides using Hookstein base pairing. So you can see that uh, the base pairing is not the normal Watson and Crick base pairing. It is the non-Watson and Crick base pairing. And so the ability to actually add any nucleotide to the template and move ahead. It is also observed to be involved in error-prone TLS for UV damages. Then you have the DNA polymerase kappa. Uh, this can bypass many lesions. So it is not just, you know, the TT, uh, the thymidine dimers that is being addressed. It can address many other lesions. Uh, but of course, its efficiency is quite low, low and it is blocked by dinucleate. So it is not able to take care of thymidine dimers. That is something that is very uh, interesting. Paul Zeta, which belongs to the B family, has the ability to replicate all DNA lesions again. And it does not have proofreading ability at all. And it is also observed to be helping in double strand break repair. So many of these polymerases have been associated with several different cancers because TLS is subject to adding a wrong nucleotide, which can lead to point mutations. And many of these point mutations can lead to different cancers. So the key molecules that are associated with the TLS, you must consider the PCNA as a very important component. What has been observed is that when PCNA is ubiquitinated, most uh, translesion synthesis components are assembled on the DNA at the lesion site because of the ubiquitinated PCNA coming and binding to the lesion. Uh, and thereby, you have the entire machinery of the translesion synthesis bypassing the lesion and moving forward for a few nucleotides. So this is an extremely important facet that has been associated with uh, the translesion uh, uh, synthesis, that is a PCNA that is ubiquitinated, has been observed to be playing an important role, although it is not a must. There are many translesion synthesis that are able to be recruited by a normal PCNA as well, a not a ubiquitinated PCNA. But nevertheless, this component is an extremely important component that plays a role in uh, actually polymerase switch. So, it helps in releasing the old uh, 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 polymerase and bringing in the TLS polymerase to carry out the translation synthesis. Just a general mechanism that looks at uh, the uh, work of the um, TLS system at the replication fork on the leading strand and in the lagging strand. So as you can see, the green is the uh, normal replicating polymerase. When you have the PCNA, reaching uh, so when you have the entire system reaching the lesion you can see that here you have the uh, polymerase switch happening that brings about the tls dna polymerase that bypasses the dna lesion and then again what you have is the the tls polymerase going away and then you have the normal replicating polymerase continuing to synthesize so uh, in in uh, the process one of the uh, daughter dna that is there has the adduct and the patch where the translation uh, lesion synthesis has been done. And here at this point, you may have erroneous uh, replication that has happened. This is looking at the leading strand. So in the leading strand, what has been uh, reported and observed or proposed in fact is that when you have the normal DNA polymerase attaching itself to a lesion, it stops replicating and it dissociates at this point and associates again at a new point, okay? 
and then it continues to synthesize. Now, uh, this is interesting. Uh, what also is observed is that at this lesion point, therefore, you would have uh, the PLS polymerase coming and binding and then bypassing this and filling up the gap over here that we have observed because this portion was not synthesized by this polymerase. And so you have the TLS synthesizing this and now you have a complete daughter DNA being formed. In the lagging strand, of course, you have multiple uh, primer template junctions formed. So every primer template junction will have a PCNA with a polymerase. And in many of these, uh, therefore, uh, there is a switch from the normal replicating polymerase to the TLS polymerase, bypasses it and then continues. So TLS basically is filling up the gap gap where at the portions where there is a DNA lesion. So this is how you have the TLS practically functioning in the cells. So let us make the conclusions. TLS involves a group of specialized DNA polymerases which may be involved in bypassing specific lesions or a broad spectrum of lesions. These DNA polymerases are observed to have active sites that are able to accommodate bulky adducts and are also able to add nucleotides using these adducts as template. The replication may be correct or may be erroneous. There is a polymerase switch of the replicative enzyme to the TLS DNA polymerase which, which in turn is attributed to PCNA in one way or the other. TLS being able to bypass the error, so there are, uh, I'm going back to PCNA, there are several domains in the PCNA that can bind only to TLS DNA polymerase and certain domains that can only bind to the replicative enzyme. So that has been found associated with PCNA. So TLS being able to bypass errors have shown to be correlated with several diseases as the replication fork stall and the replication is not completed. And also if the replication fork continues or rather the replication continues, in its synthesis it may have added a wrong nucleotide. So translation DNA synthesis is the process by which cells copy DNA containing unrepaired damages that blocks the progression of the replication fork. Bypassing these errors have also led to mutagenesis by TLS. Thank you.